Hi, everyone. I'm Cheryl from Abacus Bio, and I'm here with Sharon McIntyre from BLG. I think many of you know her. So today we're going to be talking about um, some work that we've done on the wool module. And we'll be talking about some of the background and needs for the wool module, the survey that we conducted, and, um, and some price analyses, and our plans for some reorganization of the wool indexes. So as some of you know, the SIL, um, SIL evaluates approximately 12 traits at the moment um, for dual purpose. Animals, um, lamb, hogget, and ewe fleece weight are all evaluated, and these are in the DPW sub-index that's in the New Zealand Maternal Worth Standard Index. For mid-micron, um, there's a number of other traits that are, that are currently evaluated, clean fleece weights, and fiber diameter, and these are included in a sub-index called the MMW for weight. Um, and another sub-index that's focused on quality traits, and that includes color yellowness, brightness, coefficient of fiber diameter, curvature, and staple length. So this is the current state of indexes. However, there's some limitations for these. First of all, looking at that crossbred or dual purpose um, index, the, that DPW, as you saw, that only includes fleece weight at the moment, so there it doesn't manage to value quality, and there is concern uh, about the repercussions for selection, that rewarding weight only um, potentially could increase fiber diameter over time. And also, the other limitation is that many flocks have the potential um, there, there are many flocks that do have the potential to move into a finer fiber diameter range, and at the moment we don't have a, a, a suitable tool available for people who want to select for finer fiber diameter. On the mid-micron index, uh, we also have some limitations. As, as you saw, there's a lot of traits, and at the moment it seems like uh, it, it's possible that we, we do have too many quality traits. Most of these are not measured or recorded, and um, some of them don't have very much economic value. So clean fleece weight, <coughs> fiber diameter, and color yellowness, there's some clear price signals for these traits, and I'll talk a little bit about that. But if we look at color brightness, fiber diameter, and curvature, the economic returns related to these traits um, are not clear at the moment. There, there doesn't seem to be much coming back from these. Also, staple length. Um, there is some price premiums on this, however, um, this trait is very wrapped up in management. And so there's some... Well, some uh, surely it measures stable strength as well as stable length. Uh, strength is not currently evaluated. But, uh, I mean, do you, do you get anybody measure that? No. Um, supply data? We've got, the, uh, we've got that odd bit of curvature which I think was given with fiber diameter in some cases. Um, staple length and strength is the odd thing in the last 10 years, but... Mm. Because I, I, I mean, I, I measure it, but I don't supply it. So yeah. I supply it in no, So we don't, we yeah. don't. No. Well, I, and then I get a, 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 a MWQ or whatever on my uh, an index. I don't know how it's estimated or... From correlated traits, yeah. But yeah, if you haven't measured it, then I, I wouldn't put any faith in the values. <laughs> Well, well, not, not much faith. No, no, no. If you're no, measuring no. the trait, well yeah. and good, but yeah. if you've got it and you don't put it in, then I'd have to ask you why you don't. <laughs> well, because I, yeah, so it's, it's, as I say, I get my other data from another source. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just wonder about all this. So we, we are looking at reevaluating and, and looking at uh, reevaluating the economic indexes for these traits so that they reflect the current economic conditions. So as I said, currently uh, we've got a survey um, that we've run and we are doing some price analyses particularly to develop economic values um, for fiber diameter and color that we've been focusing on and reorganizing the indexes for wool. So that survey that we did, we ran a survey from, um, from January through to April and we contacted SIL users that were um, that were from dual purpose flocks and dual purpose and terminal flocks, and especially those who have uh, previously recorded fiber diameter into SIL. 
And we had some very good, re we had good response from, from those that we contacted contacted, so I'd like to thank all of you who, who did participate in that survey. That's valuable information. Our respondents were largely, uh, most of them in the crossbred wool range, um, lots from the strong wool range as well, but, and we also had responses from mid-micron. On average, 35 micron um, from our respondents, but we ran the full range from 24 up to 40 microns. So this really shows the diversity across the industry that we see. We asked the question, are people interested in a crossbred wool quality index? And you can see from that large component of crossbreds that were the respondents, approximately a third of them were extremely interested or very interested in having a wool quality index that values, finer micron, and good color, and they'd be interested in using that. We also asked people would they be interested in measuring fiber diameter and, um, and measuring color, scoring color, and there is also very good interest in that, uh, but with over a third of respondents being extremely interested or very interested in measuring fiber diameter and also recording wool color in a standard visual scoring system. So I'll talk about this scoring system in a little bit. We asked what traits people would be interested in in a um, inequality index. And these are a bit small here, the, the font, sorry, but people were most interested in hoggett fle fleece weights and fiber diameter and yellowness. So those are the top three bars, top. There was, people reported not, um, being less interested in, in adult and lamb fleece weights. However, the, this is, these are traits that are not recorded very often. Um, however, we talk about adult fleece weights are expressed a lot more often throughout the animal's lifetime. CV of fiber diameter and curvature were also reported as being less of interest. And as I said, these are traits that are not receiving very good price signals at the moment. Right, so based on, based on the survey and based on some consultations that we've done, um, we have decided to start um, to develop a, a dual purpose wool quality sub index. So we have the, our fleece still, uh, fleece weights are still with this DPW sub index, but we're, we're currently working for a wool quality sub index that includes fiber diameter from both um, hoggets and adults and color yellowness as well. So we need to develop economic values for these quality traits. We did a price analysis um, for Micron and the effect that Micron has on, on prices. So here um, we have Micron running from 24 up to 40. And these are prices in cents per kg clean. So this is running from 200 up to about 1300. And the dots that you're seeing here are weekly auction sale prices um, since about 2014. We actually ran this over 10 years of data. And you can see here three quite clear patterns. In the medium micron range, um, mid micron, there's quite a strong increase in value as you're moving to finer microns. So we're, we're increasing 60 cents per kg per finer micron in this range, so quite a strong value increase for finer micron in that range. When we head into the stronger wools, there's still a value increase for, the, for those crossbred, uh, finer crossbred range. So here at this range, we're about 15 cents per kg increases. We're moving there uh, in that way uh, towards finer. But in the strong range, we, we're not seeing much effect at all of micron on pricing range. So it's running about flat at that point. So how do we work this into an index? Um, traditionally, what we might do is develop two or three separate indexes with separate REVs for each of these situations. However, there's disadvantages with this. First of all, if you've got separate indexes, you can't compare across there. Um, also, separate indexes would not well value animals that were falling into these in-between border ranges. And there's quite a lot of, of animals that are in that. So if people want to select and move into these higher value range, they need, to, they need ways to properly value animals that are in that border. 
So we are proposing to a curve economic value function, kind of along the same ways as the DPCR, that would individually value animals according to this curve. So those are the same price points. And what would happen is that for each animal, they would have their EBV um, that shows where they fall in terms of micron, and then for this curve, they'd be valued along it. So at 24 micron, this animal would receive a value of 11.92 cents per kg. That's based on revenue only, so we need to work in, in um, costs as well. But just based on revenue only, 11.92. Whereas an animal, still in the mid-micron range, but you can see there's a price quite a, a different price differential at 29 micron at 7.78. So that's quite a steep, um, steep price. When we're moving into the stronger micron, we're still seeing some price differentials, 31 micron to 35 micron at 6.61 and 5.11 cents. So there's still, it's still valuing um, the improved micron there. And then the curve starts to flatten out. So running 37 and above, there isn't much difference in terms of the cents per kg here. So what this does is this curve gives us a way of valuing and comparing animals across a wide diversity of, um, of, of uh, fiber diameters that are in the system. And it's also allowing us to properly value animals that are falling in those sort of in-between ranges. So it may address things like crossbreds that, um, that are at the border and potentially have, can move into higher value range. Does this make sense, this approach? From that point of view. So animals would have to have a breeding value for diameter to, so that we'd know where they sit over. For animals without it, you, you would still just be on the weight situation. Yeah. Is that a clean fleece weight? Or yeah. These are clean fleece weights. No, no, that's a clean price here, but in terms of your... Yeah, yeah we, we're that's still in yeah, still work We don't want to lose on information. We can use either, but we don't want to lose. We don't want to use lose. We're also looking at economic values for color. It's a bit more straightforward um, here when we've, when we've looked at some prices and associated with color score. Um, it's a bit more straightforward at um, losing 14 cents as we're getting per unit as we're moving into a yellower color range. However, as many of you know, color is very expensive to test for, um, prohibitively expensive for, for many. So we are looking at the development of a color scoring, a visual color scoring system, such as this, this is the Australian uh, visual score system. And um, this would be a you know, way of easily comparing um, and scoring color so that it can be, uh, so that the recording of this could be more accessible. So we're wondering what you would think about, uh, would you be interested in this? Would you be willing to use such a system? So one of the comments is with pocket, round pocket shearing is normally done in the cooler months through July and that period. And generally with colour, it's shown something that happens when there's warm moisture. So if people were getting colour at round pocket shearing, then that gives us some discrimination between animals. But if they're not, you could also consider it reporting it on ewes. If the ewes are shorn at a time of the year when there was more colour being exhibited, um, then you could potentially do a colour score. I'm not asking you to weigh the pieces, but if you were keen, you, you could collect this at, at other times as well. Why would it have to be that Oh, yes, no, but yes, that's a good point. Possibly not. Sure, I don't know. It's just a colour card. Yeah, you're looking for variation. Why mm -hmm. doesn't do it when you're yeah, yeah it's, it's like most things, if we, to get good discrimination between animals, we need to have some colours so we can see the ones that are better and worse. That's a good point. Okay. From the, from the mid-micron point of view, um, then we're, we're looking at, um, as I said, clean fleece weights. Um, what, basically, we're looking to streamline that mid-micron sub-index. So we're looking at a mid-micron wool index that includes um, fleece weights, and um, fiber diameter that is valued along that curve function, and then that color yellowness. So we are considering at this point dropping some of these other traits that, do, that don't have the value at the moment, color brightness, CV fiber diameter, and curvature. 
um, as well. And how will these fit into the general SIL index system? The moment, as I said, that DPW is within the NZ and W um, standard index. So we are suggesting the wool quality DPWQ to be um, an optional add-on at this point. And that would operate in the same way as any of the other optional add-ons like meat or facial eczema. So for those interested in using it, they can. Um, as I said, though, this, because of that nonlinear valuation for fiber diameter, this could be applied to a wide range of flocks. However, if Midmicron would like to do something, have something separate, they would be using that MM wool, that uh, Midmicron wool subindex I showed in the last slide. And then for other non wool traits, they could be adding on the other dual purpose subindexes and the other optional add ons as well. We are looking for some interest in whether people would be interested in that wool quality sub-index being eventually part of the New Zealand maternal worth and put in as a standard. So um, do you have any, any feedback on that? Well, I would like to see it go into the New Zealand maternal worth overall, but I believe it's quite good as an add-on where you can be watching the roofing on the side. I mean, how much wool is actually being recorded and worked with at the moment, and to please want to accept that how much data is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Those good points. It's really about how many flocks are putting in the data, and so the wool quality data, it's a discussion we've maybe in three to five years when we see how many flocks are reported in Australia, mm -hmm. not before. Well, yeah, the, the survey did show that there were, you know, a third of those 60 percent respondents were, were very interested to do something. So I think it does give a mandate to, to make this option available, yeah. but how widespread it becomes will, will, will vary. Whereas for everyone else, it'll still just be the way. And then just some final what we're doing, we, we want to finalize those indexes, um, finalize that, that curve function, as I said, and the, and the relative economic values, and do some testing as to the effects of the rankings and, and predictions for genetic change. We're also working on, in the wool model, um, uh, re-estimating the genetic parameters, heritabilities, and genetic correlations, and, um, and the models that are in that. And throughout this, we are going to be looking um, and asking for feedback from the users and what your opinions are on how, how um, uh, these reorganizations that we're looking at. So, great. So, thank you.